I just wish I could be half as remarkable as you. You deserve better. The woman was too stunned to speak. Oh, cons are exhausting, y'all. <laughs> I just got back the other day from Rhode Island Comic Con and it was so much fun. Oh my God. But also my introvert batteries are beyond broken at this point. I'm brain dead. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Hello all. Also, my mic cable is, uh, mm, it's, it's not looking great, which sucks because this is actually a replacement cable for the first cable that went kaput. So it would seem everything is conspiring to make things just a, a smidge more difficult for me. And I don't appreciate it. But you know, the universe is gonna do what it's gonna do, I guess, I don't fucking know. Anyways, we are gathered here today to suffer through more of season six. Uh, we are nearing the end of this pointless journey. And by the end of it, I don't know what we will have learned aside from patience. My prediction is jail by- Last time on Dragon Ball Z, Musa's voice was stolen by the Jar Jar Binks of Winx Club and Riven sucks. That is the definition of trash. Just break up. That's it. That's that's literally it. Anyway, let's get this show on the road, shall we? The Anthem. I don't know why it's not called the Elfia Anthem, but okay, all right, sure, let's go. The voice of a fairy is just so fine. Luckily, now it's mine. Oh great, we're already starting with unnecessary dialogue. What part of your magic doesn't work on him did y'all not understand? It's so weird though that Mythics doesn't even work on him because like, I thought this was supposed to be a super powerful form harnessing the power of fantasy and legend. The dragon flame is useless and fantasy is useless. That is what I'm gathering from this season. We haven't lost yet to one of the tricks monsters. We must resort to physical violence. I thought violence would be the answer. I mean, Aisha has wanted to destroy several things this season, so let's beat this dude up and steal back Musa's voice. Let's destroy it. We need to destroy the legendarium. I'm for it. But you stole her. If that is the way to save Musa, then I say that is what we will do. I do kind of like that Flora is the one who was like, Bloom, we don't have time for your stupidity. Fucking idiot. A lot of people were talking about how Rumpel is probably an attempt to cash in on the hype around the Rumpelstiltskin character after Once Upon a Time's take on him. And you will skin the children I hunt for the pelt. <laughs> that one was a quip. And I can't help but agree, but also that Rumpel is infinitely more iconic than this piece of trash. And also that would have been more interesting if he were more like that Rumpel, because striking a deal with him is basically making a deal with the devil. I need to talk about Once Upon a Time. I need to rewatch that show. That show was wild, man. That was like Disney fan fiction. <laughs> we don't have anything as rare as these relics. Well, except for the legendarium key. Fucking idiot. Or you could give him your mythics wands because they're completely pointless. Or Eldora could give her wand because she's not even really using it all that much. I feel like I would rather give him a mythics wand than the key. This is what y'all get for not putting more effort into storming Cloud Tower, I swear. Comes with the territory. Ooh, that audio editing. Eldora, you keep stalking us, waiting for the opportunity to like pop in and you can't even get the direction right. Please stop with the rhyming. It, like no one likes it. No one likes this. We need a more quantifiable time to deliberate. Shut up. <laughs> now don't move <gasps> your dally. So many people were pointing out that the lack of a voice doesn't me mean anything because it's like she was still transformed and the Winx so often just let Bloom do the talking when they transform. So like, what the fuck? And also that would mean there are no mute fairies, which yikes. Like, does it just mean her magic doesn't work without her voice? Like what? Let's go find Musa and cheer her up. Maybe we can get a sense of where she stands in all of this. Oh my God. Wow. Bloom actually said a good thing. Wow. What, what's happening? Am I high? Oh, my baby. Poor Musa. See, this is what I mean when music is like breathing to Musa. This is her way of communicating and expressing herself. Even without her voice, she's still able to make you feel what she's feeling. There couldn't be a better friend than you. Okay, I don't know where the fuck the voice is coming from. Musa, it doesn't have a voice. So what's happening? Hey, 
So wait, the instrumental that the students and Musa are playing is diegetic. It's in, happening in the universe. They are actually playing those melodies. But the vocals are non-diegetic because no one is actually singing them in universe. So what the fuck is happening? Is it a ghost? Oh God, the cafe is haunted. Ooh. Was it Elisa? Is the cafe haunted by Elisa Rosselli? It's the ghost of her presence within the series before she was, you know, faced out. You know what? I'm gonna give this a pass on the pointless party thing because that was Musa expressing herself. It's the power of the magic instruments and Musa's inspiration. Oh, I do love this though, because it shows that like, even without her voice, Musa is still the fairy of music. She is still who she is and she still has magic. Which like, in that case, let her transform. Bitch, let her be the one to bark in with Rumpelstiltskin. It's her voice that's on the line. It's really not like you to be so, so serious. People change, Sky. Riven, you're just so, like, your girlfriend has lost her voice and, you know, needs support. And you just, like, ignore her completely to focus on this duel because your ego is on the line? You're fucking ridiculous. Like, you are a clown. <laughs> People change, Sky. Huh. <laughs> Part of me wants to count this as nostalgia bait for that fight between them back in season one. If I don't change something, I'll never reach the top. You are gay! Why do you care so much? Like, why is this suddenly affecting you now? That's really all you care about? Wow. But like, why? But you did this for what? Why not? <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> why though? Ugh, you are useless. And that book is useless. God, the tricks are a mood. Except Icy. Icy's not a mood. Nobody disobeys the tricks. <laughs> Darcy and Stormy are moods. Icy is just speaking nonsense. Who's ready for the Alfea siege except less? It also feels so weird that Alfea gets attacked, you know, two episodes in a row. It feels so redundant. Like, why not just make the attack bigger and have like one invasion attempt instead of this weird shit? Wow, check it out. Check what out, the weird pink glow. Thundershot! These witches cannot be hurt by any direct attack. Oh, you mean like everything in the last few episodes, like uh, Gargantua, or like Frankenstein's monster, or like Rumpelstiltskin, or the Wizards of the Black Circle, or the Legendarium. Like the list is fucking endless. I can't believe that Daphne's romance with Thorin is one of the few things keeping me alive this season, but it is. I want happiness for her. Thorin, actually, I don't, really hate him. He's pointless, yes. He only exists to be the love interest for Daphne. But like, by extension, I do kind of care about him because I care about Daphne. So thanks season six, I guess. I don't fucking know. I didn't ask for it, but I got it. Okay, so I think I, think I, think I have everything I need. Death to all of them. Musa would like to welcome you all to the first concert of the Music Cafe Band. The Winx Club are a band again. Wait. Is this nostalgia bait? Oh, for fuck's sake. Could you two just shut up and make out already? Like, Jesus. Oh, and now there are no vocals. You know what would have been cooler? There are no vocals up until Musa gets her voice back and she sings an acapella version of the song. I mean, I still think it's great that, you know, she's mute when she saves Elfia because I really like the message that that sends for people who are mute and maybe interested in music. Like you, you can, in a way, like save the day and follow your passions, even if you, you're you mute. I don't know, I'm trying to be conscious of like the disability rep like going forward because I'm able-bodied. And it's also kind of reminding me of like um, that time Aisha was made blind. I've gone blind! Oh, don't worry, Layla, we won't abandon you. <laughs> but then had her vision restored and like, how interesting it would have been if she, like she stayed blind kind of. But then of course there's a lot of discourse about that and I'm probably not the one to lead that because I am, you know, not blind. I'm, you know, I'm not disabled. 
I don't know, like, what are your guys' thoughts on, like, how disability rep could be fo- could be handled in the show? I would really love to hear your guys' thoughts. Of course, like, prioritizing, like, fans who are disabled, you know, fans who are blind, fans who are mute, you know, all that stuff. Everybody, stay focused! Right! <laughs> Everyone, stay focused, she says, as I'm distracted by the fact her hair fucking vanished! <laughs> it's only a bunch of tricks wannabes! Piece of cake! I, it's, it's the fact that the power of the almighty dragon flame, which created the universe and kicked fucking ass in season one is able to be so easily trounced by a, a bunch of freshman witches. Just wow. You know, the intangibility spell that the witches are using in this episode and then the invisibility spell that they use in the next episode are visually so similar that I always end up mixing them up when I think about these episodes. Which admittedly, it, it, it doesn't happen a lot. I don't think a lot about these episodes because they're so deeply underwhelming and unmemorable. <laughs> The writers really gave up, didn't they? They were just like, have everything be immune to direct magic. Lisa is trying to harness the power of music! Thanks, Bloom. I never would have been able to figure that out. I do love this from Musa, though. You go, girl. Show them what music can do. Reminds me of how she kicked Stormy's ass in season two by having everyone sing together. For the record, though, the four kids version of that, where they're like, um, they're all singing the melody of It Feels Like Magic, is superior. It is. <laughs> I love Sky Without Moon and Stars, but I also love Magic in My Heart. Both are in my heart. Girl, let's just move on. Leave the applause to Musa. Wait, did Bloom just say that? Oh my god. Is that character development I sense on the wind? Oh, actually, no, I shouldn't be worried. It'll be short-lived. I'm sure it was a fluke. Oh, Musa, like, having the band of all, like, the young students on display, like, for the crowd's applause. I love her so much. That was incredible. I mean it. Too little too late, trash boy. I love Musa just shoving him away, like, nope, I'm done, goodbye. I just wish I could be half as remarkable as you. You deserve better. The woman was too stunned to speak. He spoke the words. He said it, not me. Actually, I have said it multiple times. It's just now Riven has acknowledged it, so yay. Where has this been for like several seasons? Maybe that's why, because he's a little bit resentful and envious that his girlfriend is seemingly more kick-ass than he is. And that provoked a little bit of insecurity in him and his like fragile ego and masculinity. There are a lot of guys like that who are like um, straighter into women and they're taught from a young age that they have to be breadwinners. They have to be the strong macho ones. And they can't handle it when women like are able to handle themselves. Or even when they are, they're like shamed by it, by society and by the people around them. I did not expect this episode to invoke so much societal commentary, but here we are. This episode said, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> Keychain on the ground. <laughs> you are always skipping town. Never needy, ever lovely jewel. On you. Listen to this lady who seems so smart. <laughs> it's the fact he broke it on the ground and like they weren't even worried about what that might do. I'm supposed to be there for you every day to support you and protect you as a specialist and as your boyfriend. But right now, I'm just not capable of doing either one of those things. Oh, Riven. You were never capable. <laughs> We've certainly had our ups and downs. I am going to hell <laughs> happily. I actually sincerely love this scene. There are so many valid critiques of the way that this show is like too heteronormative for its own fucking good. And the way they just conveniently pair off with the guys in the same specialist squad. It's so rare that your first relationship will be the one that you stay in your whole life. And I feel like kids need to know that. Like, I just imagine that this breakup should have happened in season four, especially with them all growing up and like trying to figure out who they are. 
a lot of times that's how relationships fall apart because people are moving in different directions or it's just people who aren't who you thought they were or you realize that your relationship is abusive or toxic. Like this is a valuable lesson for kids to be learning early on. And I am happy that it's here. I consider it two seasons too late, but it's here, I guess. Um, was it worth all the garbage we endured for the rest of the season? Personally, I do not think so, but I still do like that scene for the most part. Don't worry, season eight will ruin it. <laughs> season eight will fucking ruin it. We're here for you. And we always will be. 346 minutes later. What are you doing here? Huh? You are a lying liar! Hmm, you know, actually, now that I think about it, that was actually one of the least bad episodes of the season. I had a lot to say. I like the resolution of Musa and Riven's relationship in the breakup and Riven leaving to, like, focus on, you know, fixing his shit. I even think, like, the dilemma of do we give up Musa's voice to keep the key or do we give up the legendarium key to help Musa? I actually find that kind of interesting in its own right. Granted, it is kind of ruined by the fact that the legendarium is just so unthreatening and underwhelming, but you know. Personally, I feel like Bloom should be like looking sideways at Selena, like you try to take away one of my friend's voices. The way she communicates with the world, a core part of her identity, just to preserve your chance at freeing this asshole from your, from your stupid book. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's on. You think you can invade my school, mess with my friends, and get away with it? As if, which is... <sighs> I, you know what I would love? Bloom fucking storming in the clouds who are like, Selena, we have something to discuss. Oh, that would eat. That would eat. Or it would have been this episode, like Bloom going, you put my friends through so much. I don't care that we used to be besties. You have changed in such a disgusting way and I am fucking over it. <laughs> oh, hi, Hagen. Y you still exist, I guess. I forgot that you existed. Now that we've got the power of the magic steel, we will be able to defeat Althea once and for all. I'm sure they won't use it in any interesting way, so I'm not worried. You have to set the localizer using a spectrosensitive potentiometer. I shut up with the so many fucking syllables, oh my lord. The only reason the localizer isn't working is because we need to stall for more time. That's the only fucking reason. Rumpelstiltskin happens to be the greediest, most stubborn dwarf in all legendary history. Don't be Don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? The Althea underfloors are full of magic objects. The underfloors? How many fucking secret places are in this school? Magic Archive? A special book should be in a special place. This whole place is special. Forget it. Hall of Enchantments? The entire history of the magic dimension is here. Think of it as a museum of magic. Forget it. These dresses are fabulous. Hang on, fabulous. That is my simple request. Weirdly? I kind of like this reaction from Griselda. Griselda has always been so hard on Stella that part of me thinks maybe this is Griselda acknowledging Stella, like realizing that she's found her passion and like growing into who she's supposed to be, which I'm sure is what Griselda wants for all of her students. Like the reason she's so hard on them is because she's like, cut out this juvenile shit so you can wise up and be who you're supposed to be. Again, two seasons too late, but you know. It's fine. Griselda said girl boss gatekeep gaslight and also Peacock. She she also said Peacock. I'm not sure why she said it, but she did. It has to go in obnoxious Stella humor though. It does. I'm sorry. It just does. Huh? Uh, check it out. It's the door to the greenhouse. That That's literally the door to the greenhouse. This place is amazing. Musa, you haven't even entered the room yet. They were the most powerful fairies in all magic history. Don't y'all say that about all ancient fairies? I am unimpressed. There's no story behind the champions. They're just random mythological things that have no relevance. Res of the flame. Like we're not learning about Elphia's history through them. They're just there. Like, did they create Elphia? Were they Elphia students? Were they before the time of Elphia? Are they somehow related to Arcadia? What's happening? <laughs> Oh god, no, there's more. 
this is all going in the obnoxious comedy cat category. I just no speak and fashion forward. No. Sparkly. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> Gotta waste that time so we can pad the episode. Wouldn't want anything plot relevant to happen. We are on episode 24. After this, there are only two episodes left. We should be gearing up for the fucking finale. Let's see what we were doing in the other episode 24s of the previous five seasons. <laughs> It's so visually similar to the intangibility spell. I, what am I supposed to do with this? Wouldn't people notice the storm clouds or hear the thunder in the distance though? Oh no, you got dirt and smudge on the CGI model. The horror. Is anyone else depressed that the Alfea students aren't as kick-ass as they used to be? Like the first three seasons, they were always ready to transform and fight alongside the Winx and kick ass. Remember who you are. You are fairies and fairies don't fear witches. Like that siege of Alfea in season three is everything. I'm not over like, like <sighs> the filler is so frustrating because like if you go back to the first three seasons and even four seasons, they always packed so much content into like 22 minute episodes. Like that Siege of Elfia in season three had also also had the Winks, you know, going to class, chilling and having tea, Valtor conquering Cloud Tower, the history of Valtor and Griffin, Valtor versus Farragonda, the siege, Musa getting her enchantix, Musa and Galatea's relationship. So much content. What's happened in this episode? Nothing. Nothing at all. Time to summon our most powerful defense. 12 seconds later. Alfea barriers are so fucking useless, I swear. Wow, Tecna's not even here to like transform with them. Okay, I guess we really don't care about her. Also, I'm realizing that we will never see Musa's mythics again. So, you know, that's fine. Actually, yeah, we'll never see any of the other mythics uh, forms again from this point, aside from Bloom and Aisha. So, great. I hope y'all got your mythics, Phil. <laughs> Get me! Nymph of Cyretics! I'm just realizing now that when Elphia was attacked last episode, Daphne didn't transform and fight. Maybe she was off with Thorin, like, on a date. Like, <laughs> you know, Elphia can handle itself. I'm gonna go, you know, grab a drink with my man. And I respect that. Daphne has seen enough combat for, like, several lifetimes. You call, we answer. No other specialist, though. <laughs> I, what happened to all, like, the other Cloud Tower students who aren't, like, studying under the tricks? Like, the ones who were in the school when the tricks attacked Griffin and conquered it. Like, where did they go? Did they all just go home? Busted! It was B-U-S-T-E-D, you are busted! Come on, girls, let's roll! You know what would have been cool? Maybe, like, they stayed at Elfia. Like, Elfia sheltered them, and they helped the fairies with, like, stopping Cloud Tower. And they're like, the tricks do not represent witches or witch kind. Griffin does. And now we will do it for Griffin, alongside the fairies and the specialists. I would love that. But no, we can't have nice things. Never, never have nice things. And thank you, Tecna, for your dedication to the matter. It's one of the few times Tecna will matter, I'm gonna take it, even if it was stupid. Wow, Tecna's not even in the close up. All right, I, uh, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> now, guerrilla warfare wouldn't be convenient for anyone. No, but it would be fun because y'all would get your asses trounced. Well, if we were in season three, you, the, the witches would have no chance. They keep defeating us. You said it, sister. We learn from the best, Mistress Griffin. No, y'all learned from Darkar and Valtor and got nothing out of it. The winner decides the fate of the losing team? Sisters, we've got a smarty on our hands. What a juvenile insult. This lady who seems so smart. Bloom, as fairy of the dragon flame, you are our most powerful fairy. Does this go in Bloom as best as Uwu? Because she is technically correct. You know what? It's in such stupid context and season six has no way to back it up because the dragon flame and bloom have been weak as shit and getting their asses kicked so often. It's going in bloom's bestest, ooh. Your opponent will be Selena. 
Selena. Oh, wow. Imagine Bloom and Selena actually like confronting each other and having to deal with their past. Wow. Imagine a conflict between characters that mattered. <gasps> what a concept. I feel like my commentary is on point. Jesus Christ. I assume maybe this is because I was on a break and my brain had time to recharge. This is fun. What happened? I grew up. That's what happened. Ugh. It's such a stale conflict. It really is. It couldn't be Selena envying Bloom's magic and power. It couldn't have been from like some kind of falling out that happened in their youth that Selena has carried with her ever since. It couldn't be anything interesting like that. Actually, that would be really cool because so many people could probably relate to that, like friendships or relationships that like fell out from under them and they, they carry a lot of baggage from them. And sometimes that comes back to haunt them later in life. Look at how my tears ricochet. Oh, there's so much material to work with and so much for like kids to learn from too. But like, fuck them, I guess. They just get this basic ass shit. Destroy the fairies of Althea. I feel like this should be proof that not all fairies are good, but you know. Wow, Bloomix really is useless. Now I'm just imagining if they were to use mythics in the real world and like mythics versus the Althea champions and how cool that might be. But again, not allowed to have nice things. Not me actually enjoying Aisha and Nex's camaraderie. <laughs> Aisha and Nex are fine. I don't hate it. I actually kind of like their dynamic for the most part. It's better than Aisha and Roy. Fuck that shit. We can use pixie bonding to make the Althea students more powerful. That's not how bonding works. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Bonding never made the Winks stronger. It just was a connection that they shared between a pixie who was considered their soulmate and like their opposite in some way. That's the bonding. It's like love at first sight between a fairy and a pixie. Their bond will be unbreakable. Yeah, it did make them better people because it, you know, forced them to grow and learn new parts of who they are. And you could argue it also got them ready to earn their Charmix forms, but it doesn't make you stronger. That's literally not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Like you don't just get a pixie and then suddenly get a boost of power. Yeah! Next! No! Be gone! I love how Aisha was like acting so dramatically about that when it's like, Icy is not threatening in the slightest. And clearly that was very easy to do. Actually, I don't know why we're not just kicking the Trix's asses and just ending their conquest right now. We easily could. This is really making me wish Aisha and Icy had a rivalry. I would love to see those two duke it out. Of course, with their four kids voices and their old personalities. Did you expect anything less? Uh, from season six, uh, no, I expect nothing but the floor. I expect nothing but garbage. I've never seen so much garbage. It's perfect. Magic wait! Mythics! <sighs> Mythics is so underwhelming and ugly in 3D. I will say though, the Mythics wings are gorgeous except for Flora's. Like I love Aisha's Mythics wings and her shoes. Holy shit. These shoes rule. These shoes suck. And I actually kind of like the individualized Mythics wand designs. And now that I look closely, like, at least if ever like pointed out like the water lines on her dress, I do actually really like those. I just wish they did more with the dress because it looks like a prom dress. They had to be here somewhere. Shut up. You need this way. Shut up. That looks familiar. Shut up. Come on, Pixies, where are you? Shut up. I know. Shut the fuck up! They've been in here the whole season and yet Aisha is able to pull them out. It was made so abundantly clear that if you spend too much time in the Legendarium world, you will be trapped there forever. Don't overstay your welcome in the Legendarium world or you will become fictional characters forever. The Pixies have been in here for all the fucking season. It, they, they shouldn't be able to like leave. And even normally, if they were already sent here, they wouldn't be able to come back anyway because they don't have wands to act as their portals. So like if Aisha is able to get the pixies out of the legendarium world, doesn't that just mean that like any fairy with a mythics wand can get anybody out regardless of how long they've been in there? Your roots are free from the legendarium world. You can go back home. So that renders the threat pointless because if one of the winks ends up spending too much time in there, one of the other winks or Eldora could just go in and get her and it's not a big fucking deal.
by that logic, you, there is no time limit, really. You just always have to leave one of the Winx or Eldora back in the real world as like an emergency line. My point is that whole stuck in the legendarium world forever thing is pointless. It's absolutely pointless. I have to wonder if part of it is just that they don't want to spend too much time in the CGI world and they had to come up with an excuse, but they also wanted to like create unnecessary pointless tension and they were hoping that the audience wouldn't think about it too long because this is for toddlers who don't think. You know, God forbid we give kids something that actually engages with them and that they can enjoy later when they grow up. I don't know, it's not like making something that's meant for all audiences, regardless of age, allows you to have an incredibly wide market that allows a product to be enjoyed by all ages kids and adults alike that will also grow up with the children. No, animation is only for young baby children who we don't take seriously and who don't deserve nice things. And fuck them when they grow up and they realize it's not the best. I just, it's more practical to make something that's enjoyable for all ages and not just for kids. And if it even is just for kids, kids deserve better than this. I forgot that you existed. <laughs> Oh wow, Tune in Digit are here. Y'all really replaced Tune in Digit and then had the gall to have Tune in Digit be cameos. And they're in their old designs too. Like Digit isn't gender bent here. Digit is still a girl. So like you could change her back. So that's not the excuse. I just, fuck all of this. Well, at least Tune in Digit are in their old designs and they weren't in ugly pop pixie outfits. That's something, I guess. The Althea champions. That's serious business. Let's get down to business. What is this? Some new fairy dust thing? <laughs> Not icy forgetting about fucking fairy dust like everyone else did. It's the power of bonding. That's, this is literally not how bonding works, but okay. Like, this is not how bonding works. It doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't repel dark forces. It doesn't even, like, feel all that important because pixies can't just bond with fairies from afar. That's not how that works. They have to meet. Their personalities have to kind of clash yet complement each other in some kind of way. I like who I am now. I have power! No, you don't. Don't. You are pathetic. God, this is so... It's really coming across as, like, Bloom is the bestest, so if you fall to darkness, she'll save you. Bye, bitch. <laughs> so you can just snag a spark of the dragon flame like that? How? Selena didn't even use the legendarium to do that. She didn't use some kind of spell or incantation. She just ye yanked a flame out of her chest. What did Selena need? Fucking idiot. Doesn't that mean anybody could do that? Like... The tricks had to use their Wisperian crystals to do that. Yes, I'm calling them that because I will not call them the vacuums. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> I didn't even do anything all season. Don't worry, darling, no one did. What got into you? Bloom, you know, Asheron got like into her head and started like manipulating her. Like, come on. But like to manipulate someone, you also have to like, you know, promise them something that they want, which like... Selena doesn't have like a, a full character. All she wants is power, but she has no motivation or drive beyond that. She's basically Cinder from Ruby, except less annoying, which congrats. And now you're happy? Happier than you can even imagine. Also, yay, I guess this means Aisha and Nex are dating now. I get, no, no one ever says that. No one ever says that they're dating or like anything. So it's like, what's happening? We're Aisha and Roy dating? Like, what's happening? <laughs> You will soon be out of that book and back in the real world. You couldn't have done this episodes ago. Okay, that was, uh... Mm. I hope y'all enjoyed my commentary. I feel like I actually had a lot to say this time around. I definitely needed that break. Oh God, as usual, it's interesting ideas that they do absolutely nothing with. It could have been a really interesting last few episodes if Asheron was free and we learned more about him and we learned more about why Selena fell out with Bloom and Mythics got to shine a little bit more in the last few episodes. But nah, it's just been a lot of pointless filler that no one cares about, that no one finds engaging. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. Thanks. <sighs> okay. Um, in that case, I'm just going to go get lunch. All right, bye. Bye.